This PABC tutorial is the first on choosing search terms. It will introduce you to what keywords are, how to choose them, and how to enter them in most databases. Suppose you have a patient with tennis elbow and you want to do a search to determine whether you should use laser therapy or deep friction massage. The first steps in searching were covered in the earlier tutorials. Step 1 is to define the question using PICO. Step 2 is to decide which databases to use. Let's look at step 1, putting the question in PICO format. In this case, the patients are adults with acute tennis elbow. The intervention being considered is low-level laser therapy. The comparison is deep friction massage. And the desired outcomes are increased strength, increased range of motion, and decreased pain during activity. Step 2 is choosing where to search. For this question, we would probably try the Cochrane Library to check for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. These are the highest levels of evidence. EBM reviews to search multiple databases at once for high evidence material. SINEL or Rehab Plus for the large spectrum of physiotherapy journals. And finally, PubMed or Medline, as there are useful limits to help focus the search. Step 3 is deciding which terms to enter in the database search box. A keyword is a searchable term that appears in the text of a record. Keywords are targeted words or phrases that will help you find information on a topic. For example, tennis elbow is one relevant phrase for this search question. In choosing keywords, follow these tips. First, think of synonyms. As an example, for the search term tennis elbow, we might also use search terms such as lateral epicondylitis, elbow epicondylitis, elbow tendinitis, and elbow tendinopathy. You should also consider spelling variations. From our previous list, some spelling variations might include tendinitis spelled with an I or with an O, and tendinopathy spelled with an I or with an O. You should also consider using truncation. Truncating means using only the first part of a word as a search term, after which a wildcard symbol is used to represent any letters that follow. Most databases and search engines use an asterisk as this wildcard symbol. For example, TEND asterisk could be used to search for tendinitis, tendonitis, tendinopathy, etc. However, it would also retrieve terms such as tendril, tendency, tender, etc. It is sometimes useful to use wildcards inside search terms. When keywords might vary by internal letters, wildcards can be used inside a search term in most databases. The question mark symbol is usually used for internal wildcards. For example, tendinitis can be spelled with an I or an O. Entering T-E-N-D question mark and I-T-I-S would search for both spellings. Similarly, labor can be spelled with an O or an O-U. Entering L-A-B question mark R would search for both spellings. So how many terms should you use in a search? For some topics, very lengthy lists of keywords might be developed. Must they all be used in every search? The answer to that question is no. How many terms to use depends on how exhaustive the search needs to be. If the purpose of your search is to get one systematic review article, you may only need to use one or two terms. If you want to conduct a systematic review and need records for every relevant paper, then all of the search terms would need to be used. Index terms might also be useful. So far, we've looked at choosing keyword terms. Index terms are another type of search term. These are very important in many databases. For example, mesh terms are used in PubMed or other Medline database interfaces. 
The next tutorial will introduce index terms and a subsequent one will show you how to look up mesh terms. Thanks for watching and please check out the other tutorials available through the PABC website.